They moved a lot of stuff. Okay, welcome back to Thrive in the Future. This week, I have my son-in-law, Eric, with me. And we've been talking about AI and how he uses it. So I thought it'd be an interesting conversation. So Eric, ChatGPT is now, I think I saw today, the eighth most popular website on the web. It's been out for a little bit more than a year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's gone from, and now there's all kinds of different AIs. Oh, yeah. So many. So, so you use it a lot and you had some interesting your interesting applications with it. So what, what are you using it for? Yeah. So the, the first thing I really, the, the thing I use it most for is work. My, my boss is all about AI. It's like every day she posts an article, AI related some way, shape or form. Um, really? Yeah. All the time, all the time. I can't keep up with it. There's just too many. That, and that's the thing with AI. It, it changes basically like daily. So trying to keep up with the newest, greatest, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. But no, I start using it like when we first, when I first had access to ChatGPT, when, when we could, it was just a really powerful like search engine. Like yeah. I spent hours and hours trying to like do like SQL da database statements, like trying to learn SQL statements where that's not my forte mm -hmm. to then get ChatGPT where I can just describe to it what I'm trying to do in the tables and give it like the table headers. And from then it just became a matter of just having a conversation with it and getting complex queries out in a matter of minutes instead of spending like one time I spent like almost like 12 hours trying to figure out how to do a database query. Now it can spit out those complex ones for me within like a couple of prompts. I'm getting those awesome queries without having to beat my head against the wall trying to learn something I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So do you have the version that is like persistent and, uh, and you can go back and then pick up where you left off or how did, how did you, how do you train it and, and everything to match your style? Yeah. So at, uh, at home, it's uh, at, there's a memory in the, like the free version if you're not paying for it. So you have to manage that memory. So I find a lot of the times if I'm on here really doing a bunch of random things, every once in a while when like, I'm typing, you'll see it say memory updating. And so if something I said or something I did, it thinks it's noteworthy and it makes a quick little align prompt for itself, trying to remember key things about myself. Like, for example, I was researching a whole bunch of things like about uh, Bitcoin mining or crypto mining and all that kind of stuff. And it kept updating the memory. And after like two or three days, the memory is all full of all my preferences. And it was just all the random things I've been asking it about mining and i thought it was my preferences so i have to go in there and clean up every once in a while but paid versions like the one i have at work doesn't seem to have much of a limit for its memory um it can train the main model but we have it turned off for work so it's only used within my model it doesn't train chat gpt all together so it doesn't feedback all my questions or things i search in it that shouldn't get fed back to the main uh main engine um but at work, it's the general one. I've taught it to kind of know my voice. I have about a about a two paragraph long description of how I like it to talk. All those things like don't don't say you're welcome. Don't don't always be cordial or remove certain greetings or things like that when I'm asking you to write an email. Um, but it's just slowly adapted to what I what I actually like. Um, but then I actually created a, a couple different chats specifically for job purposes. Um, one is I have to do, in my job, I do integrations. And so I have to actually create the integrations and document what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. nobody likes doing documentation. Um, so spend about two or three days teaching it how to interpret some of the data that I use and gave it examples of how I'd like documents to appear and start feeding it examples and saying, hey, can you recreate this? Can you recreate that? And usually when I get a chat to do what I like, I ask it. I ask it to create its own prompt. So, hey, I like what we're doing here. Create a prompt so I could do this again. Um, so once I got to that, I actually took that and created my own individual chat from the prompts of actually just messing with it. So that way, I have a specific one that does things the way that I like to every single time without having to try to go back to the original conversation. Um, I actually just have a, a a specialized chat that I can open up and do the tasks I wanted to do. Wow. Yeah, so I I don't use ChatGPT because it usually I can tell when something's written in ChatGPT, you know, because people are using it for 
for their websites and everything else, or they're using it for their promo emails or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it has this kind of foo foo, you know, uh, over, over, um, what did I call it? Over evocative descriptions of stuff. Yeah. You know, like your, your paradise, make your garden a paradise and stuff like that, which is cool if you wanted to sound like that, but I don't talk like that. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so, I what I I use Claude AI uh -huh. and that's because one of my mentors uses it and even the free version allows you to set up projects and it keeps the memory of it so that I'm not losing my project in be you know when I log off right mm, okay. and so so what I've been using it for is to uh, to take my um, outreach emails like for my food forest because I'm following up with clients that bought trees from me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm saying, Hey, you know, how, how did you like the, how did you like the trees? How did it work out? And, uh, and let me know if there's anything I can do to help. That's. Follow up with. See if they're a potential customer for. It spits it out, but then also is more similar to my switch over to goofy. <laughs> Okay, still there? Yep, I'm still here. Yeah, so and and then um it doesn't change my voice that much and then it remembers some of the things in between um in between sessions and that's pretty helpful. Yeah, chat 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 GPT does that ish on the free version. Um, but again, it's that memory has persist. I can go back to previous conversations, I can kind of search through through them and find them. But that would be nice to have the projects because, yeah, there's a couple of them I, I head back to the original conversation. I find that it's not too bad for the most part. It's like general information or some specific things. But definitely when it comes to using it for coding or really technical things, um, the longer a chat runs, the more likely it's going to start diverging and having hallucinations and making stuff up. <laughs> really? Oh, do you find it makes stuff up? I find it struggles the longer a conversation goes if I haven't specialized it. So I'm guessing that's what what um, Claude does. Is it does that little bit more specialization. If I use just a general chat without any like boundaries on it, um, it will start diverging. So I spent uh, too much time building like a productivity app for myself where I could like brain dump because ADHD, one of the things for ADHD, it's good to dump all the things that you need to do and quickly assess it if it's if it's a high priority or if it's urgent or if it's important and kind of rate them. So I create an app where I could dump a title, rate it real quick, give it a due date, hit save, and then don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time literally going through the chat, having it help me build it in Python. And I found once I spent like maybe an hour or two inside of it, it started repeating some of the same mistakes. It would get stuck in a loop where it just wouldn't move past what it knew. And this is probably about four or five months ago. So I think it's gotten a little bit better. But again, I would just use it to create a prompt saying, hey, I need to start over. Give me a prompt. And I move over to a new chat window. And it pick up where we left off. And I start making progress again. So I found that, that sometimes that happens. It does try to make up stuff. Um, and that's why it's good to give it the boundaries. Like you're saying with the voice and give it its tone. I've done that. Um, yeah. A good trick is say, write it at a high school grade level. It's a great mm. trick whenever you're talking to it is give it a description. So it's not speaking at the highest level of education somebody might have. Um, so those are cute, the little cues that you can give it, uh, tell it to use run on sentences, things of that nature to make it more human like. Um, and then it right. eventually starts picking it all up. Yeah. So one of the things also that's interesting, most people are using ChatGPT and AI as basically search engines. But mm -hmm. the the real power of it is to assign it a role and then and then ask it to make determinations based on that role. So I took some training 
from the Project Management Institute on that, and it would basically say, okay, so you know, you are you are um, a steering committee. You're the this executive or that executive or whatever else. Um, how would you grade this proposal? And you can even go so far. Some folks are going and uh, using it for interviews, where they'll mm -hmm. they'll upload the the um, you know the the um, financial statement for the company they're interviewing at. They'll upload some of the mission statements from the company and they'll even update and upload some of the resumes of the people who are going to interview them and they say what sort of given this background what sort of uh, questions do you think that this person will ask put yourself in this role and then and then uh, with this background and what uh, what it would be in, what do you think would be important to this person what kind of questions do you think they would ask And that's then, funny uh, I, I i did the inverse of that actually recently we're hiring somebody we're we actually are hiring someone where we're it's basically not replacing me but i my role is expanded so part of my role needs to go somewhere else mm -hmm. and because i've used chat for the last year uh, I was like, hey, chat, what do I do? What, what, is, what can you create like a job listing minus these things that I do in my role? And it actually produced everything that I have been doing at my company for like, the last year, uh, minus what I told it to minus. So I, I gave it to my boss. I was like, hey, this is what the person needs to do. Um, and then when it came to the interviewing part of it, um, again, I gave it the role of acting like me. It was like, I need questions to match this role. And here are all the resumes that the recruiter gave us. Um, which ones do you like that fits this role based on how you and I interact and what I'm looking for? And it was it was pretty accurate. The, the one we went with was in the top two of the ones that it presented out of the 10 I fed it. So that, uh, that is you mean a the candidates fun way or to the do questions? it. Uh, the candidates. I, I generated questions to ask the candidate, but uh -huh. uh, I asked it to assess which candidates are the strongest and why. So I can know what to look for and actually press in to make sure they actually met that criteria, not just the resume look good. So I, I yeah. use chat to kind of make sure I could see through the fluff and then ask the questions to validate the reasons for the choice. Wow. How did you do the the do my job description, but leave out the stuff that I want to do in my new job? <laughs> yeah. How did you do that? That's interesting, too. Yeah. It's it's sort of like a uh, in, inside that these are the two sets and choose the stuff that's not in the uh, intersection, right? Yeah, I just I I interact with it in such a conversational way. Um, I think that's the key: is the more you use it, the more it does get in tune with your voice. Mm -hmm. I, I I mean, we'll, we'll we'll crack jokes at each other, which I think is really weird. That you're, chat you're can typing, actually... you're typing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah typing. Okay. I'll do voice. I'll do voice to text sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. I don't use the the voice activated one because it's not on the desktop just yet, where I can actually just have a conversation. Um, but yeah, just typing. Uh, how I kind of distinguish it is I told us like, hey, from the from the time we start working, from all of the service desk type stuff, from everything that we do, I need you to create a job description minus everything that's specifically related to the integrations I'm developing and the documentation around those integrations. And so then it spit everything out um, and it's pretty accurate. I think I only had to remove like one thing that it threw in there that wasn't really part of the role. Um, but no, it was just having that conversation with it. It gets used to what you're looking for in the way that I'm talking, which is nice. Mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah, my mentor uses it. He just did a, he used his Claude and he used it to make a huge like 95 page proposal yeah. For for some sort of uh, um, proposal he was going to, and and then it was interesting because he'd be able to say, okay, look at what I've done so far, and then tell me if I'm redundant, you know, because he he'd find out that like on page twenty he would start saying the same thing again, right? Yeah. And then uh, show me places where I can improve this or whatever else, and and. Uh, and and stuff so and he, as well as when we have a zoom call then he'll dump the the transcript and then use that to analyze the transcript and mm -hmm. give a summary of the meeting and then also you know the whatever the points are right without having to yeah. go all the way back through it but yeah that's interesting from uh that's interesting from an interview standpoint like you were talking about 
um, we always have to ask the same question. So we, <laughs> you know, to be fair. So the, um, <laughs> but yeah, that would be interesting to ask the clarifying questions based on what stands out without having to necessarily deep dive on all of the stuff, right? Oh yeah, it's it's been fun finding different ways. That's, the fun thing is, it's just it's just about anything you can think of. It can it can do if you know what you're looking for. Like two 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 extreme examples. One, it's making mashed potatoes the other day, right? And I mm -hmm. wanted six servings of mashed potatoes, but on the box it was it was four servings and eight servings, and I had no interest in doing the math. So I took a picture of the box. And I uploaded the image to ChatGPT and said I, of the of the the measurements and said, "Hey, give me the measurements for six servings," and it spit it out without a problem, without further prompts. It was able to read the picture, the label on the picture, and give me really? the servings. Yeah. yeah so again, <laughs> no, 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 no one taught me that. It's like you know what? I'm just gonna try it. And then uh, the the far other extreme is at work. We were having a meeting, and our client success manager wasn't there. And we we're talking about clients and are, are we being successful? Um, I went through in the middle of the meeting because we had questions about some of the clients we had recently met and we couldn't find her notes. So I went and grabbed the transcripts from the last meeting, she wellness meetings. And in the middle of the meeting, it took me about 10 minutes. I built a chat GPT where I could upload the transcript and I told it, tell me who was in the meeting, give me the highlights of the meeting. And then I need you to give me um, the temperature of the client. Are they hot? Are they cold? Are they at risk? Um, and if they are, what are the things that we need to focus on based on what you could find in the meeting? And that's interesting. Again, about 10, 15 minutes of fiddling with it just back and forth. And I got successfully translating, going through transcripts very, very quickly where I could literally just upload a transcript of a uh, client. And boom, I get the, the temperature check really, really quick and then ran it by the client success manager to make sure it was actually accurately portraying it and shared it with her. And she loved it because now she can doesn't have to do her notes or summaries because she can just upload transcripts and get it done right then and there. So what was the what was the criteria used for the temp check? Um, I said looking looking for tones, looking for discomfort. Um Anything that would, anything that they were repetitive on, anything that they kept, if they repeated something over and over again, and just look for overall tone of the conversation. Um, and it was pretty accurate. Some, it, one, one that was a little worse than the other. I think it's because, again, ChatGPT was taking a shortcut. It wasn't, it wasn't reading the entire transcript. So I had to go back in and prompt it saying, hey, you need to go through the entire transcript because I figured it was only going through about four or 500 lines. So I was like, you need to fact check it. So once you get ready for assessment, go back and check to see if you've hit all the points. Go back through the transcript yourself and make sure you've hit all the points and then rewrite it again. So that's a lot of things. Sometimes when you're doing higher logic, tell it to double or triple check its work and act as uh, act as like the, the, the middleman of making sure you're actually getting the job done correctly. So that, mm -hmm. that's always tricky getting it to self-check, but if you can get self-check, it gets a lot better. Yeah, it's kind of weird how it, you know, like you were saying, it might not tell you the truth or it may fudge stuff. And it's like, eh, it's kind of weird how it's doing that. <laughs> you would think it wouldn't do that. I'm not even Correct. sure how you would program that. The so. earlier models were really bad. There's a guy, there's a there's a gentleman from our church. He works in aviation. And so there's a lot of test cases or a lot of documentation they have to do. So the, the legal side of it, they're trying to pull information out. And he tried many times experimenting. And it would begin citing, had URLs, papers, citing documentation, mm -hmm. all of it was fake. ChatGPT was filling in the gap of its knowledge by creating something from nothing to fill in the gaps. Um, so his company had to implement a two, two AI approach where one AI is generating the information, it feeds it to another. So the other one does the fact checking and acts as basically the knowledge check to make sure what it generated was real and anything that wasn't real, it flags it, sends it back for it to do it again and then provides feedback to the end user of where they need to adjust the other chat. So AI critiquing AI, it's been very interesting. Yeah, that's weird. You would think that, yeah. The fact that it would make stuff up was just, yeah, that's always been a little bit disturbing. So yes. It's, it's, it's a fun little experiment. I don't, they might have fixed it by now, but one of the things you really could tell how 
they use really I call like fuzzy logic to try to bridge the gap to try to make it think like a person and yeah. I think the thinking like a person comes at the sacrifice of being correct um, mm. if you go ask chat GPT or you know, most of the AIs for a while you could ask it how many R's are in the word strawberry and they all would say two like all of them would say two R's even though there's three R's in strawberry Okay. And you would you would ask it like, are you sure? Count how many R's are in strawberry, and it would count, and it would still come out with two until you literally told it, no, there's three R's, and it'd be like, oh, okay, I guess you're right. And I, I dug into it, and I I decided to have a conversation with it, and yeah, the way it kind of described it is it just it's trying to think like a person, so it's not really reading what it's saying, it's not really comprehending what it's responding. It's using the logic that is given. Whatever AI is, it's using that logic, but doesn't inherently actually check itself to make sure what it's saying is true. Well, I hope it, I hope it's not hooked up to anything mission critical. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, and that's why the general one I think we hit on our own. That's why there's, I think that's why there are so many. Like I spend a lot of time watching some. There's the one guy who does a lot of creating two chats and debating each other. So mm -hmm. he, he's done like hot button topics. A lot of them are like um, religious tones or even abortion or some other ones, but making two experts out of the chats and then having 20 chats judge the debate. And he has the two, A's, two AIs debate each other. And it, it's the, he's gotten pretty good where it sounds like two people debating with no emotions and no name calling. So it's kind of nice and refreshing. And it's just really interesting to see which arguments come out on top for me, I'm not surprised on most of them. Um, you know, of course, I'm partial to which side, which the argument I want to win. But more often than not, the one I, I want wins, wins. So, so I find it interesting the AI logic, the truth reigns out even, even when people are trying to use the whole of the internet to trick you to believing something that's not true. Yeah, so is ChatGPT now hooked up to so the internet? So if you reference something, it'll go out and look at it? Or are you still in... A in a bubble where you have to tell his stuff or will, will it cross reference out and do the research? I don't think it's fully live live where it can do real time research. However, it can um, crawl a website. So if you give it a link, especially okay. if it's like a document or something of that nature, like if it's a, if it's a website, it's not like an ad website, something like that, but you can give it a, an active link and it will come through it. So like researching like different, um, different computer parts. I could feed it the computer parts and be like, hey, is this going to meet my needs? And it'll give me the breakdown of why it would or why it wouldn't. Um, yeah. So it can do real-time research on what you provide it, but I believe it's still operating on an older model of the database. I, I think it's pretty up-to-date because before it was like three or four years old. I think it's now only, it's operating like at, at a six-month age of what is currently on the internet. Yeah, Claude's not hooked up to that, and uh, so you know you couldn't do, you couldn't do the uh, look up this company and give me the, give me the highlights of the financial statement. You'd actually have to take the financial statement, upload it mm. into the project, upload the people, upload the mission statement, and then now actually to cor correlate it. It can't go out and grab it itself, even if you tell it where to go. It's it's usually not hooked up. Either that gotcha. or that's the super super duper expensive version. I don't know, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we see we have it. Uh, we have it. So we've got a lockdown at work. We can't use AI because uh, of potential for security or data breach where somebody yeah. will take it and say, hey, you know, tell me what tell me the importance of this data. And then, you know, we're dealing with health data and that's not cool. So we've got it completely locked down. But they are working yeah. on something where they do have it opened up so that um uh, it can read x-rays and then determine the amount of periodontal disease, like mm. dental x-rays. And so, you know, so it's like, it, it's like reading the, the amount of uh, periodontal disease on the x-ray and then, um, you know, and it's cutting out like two or three people. Unfortunately, that's cutting out two or three people, but you know, <laughs> their jobs, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's sort of the way it goes. That's what everybody's afraid of is like, oh, no, the project management will go away because chat GPT could, or the AI in general can take care of that. And I'm like, well, yeah, except that people are illogical. So AI mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to handle that. 
Yeah, that's the thing. Everyone is afraid that AI is going to replace something. But but there, there's been many things in the past where we were, this is it. This is what's going to replace everyone. And we're not going to, we're, 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 everyone's going to lose a, lose a job. But I, I feel AI is, it, it's to, to make the leap that it's going to replace somebody wholly. I don't think it can. It can replace the, the very repetitive, predictable job parts but in general, it can't take over a complete creative thinking just yet. Maybe, maybe one day, but that creative thinking is still required in a lot of job spaces, but it's going to eliminate the jobs of necessity. Like the place I used to work at where they, they, the amount of people that they had to process applications and to process documents was astronomical because as they grew, every time they grew, they had to, you know, 2x the amount of people they had to process those paperwork. And so is it eliminating jobs or is it making businesses more efficient where they weren't efficient before? I mean, McDonald's, McDonald's got the production line up and running before they still have, they still generated, they, they generated so many jobs with that model of actually having production line inside of, inside of the, the McDonald's. And of course, again, we're going towards aut fully automated McDonald's, whatever. But I, I think that that's the thing. There's always an opportunity to capitalize on the next piece of technology and not necessarily be left behind because it's replaced you in, in the workforce. Yeah, I went to uh, McDonald's in um, the middle of Kansas City and they had obviously hooked up voice recognition to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it took my it took my order over over the um, the drive through and yeah. there was like only one person working in there. Yep. So, you know, got up to the front and, and, uh, yeah, it was, it's kind of weird. And I mean, it asked the right questions and everything like that. So, but, so what do you think about, uh, uh, ethic wise? So now we've got this power to do this or that or whatever else. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I've, I've heard, I've heard some people like Elon said that, uh, it's already outgrown its programming and it has a personality and, and uh, you know, there's some people saying that, uh, oh, well, you know, it's, it's infused with something, but uh, you know, from an ethical standpoint, um, what, what do you think about that? I think it's, I think it's dangerous because it's in a sense that AI, it, it, I, I see it like this, like something sound good on paper, but as soon as you involve people in it, it immediately falls apart. Like, you know, socialism on paper worked for the Smurfs, put it in practical use. It's horrible. Someone's always going to get taken advantage of and there's going to be a genocidal maniac. Like this is what's going to happen um, with AI. I think it's the exact same way. I've seen so many debates. Uh, for example, I've seen people post videos of, hey, look, I asked ChatGBT and Islam is the one true religion. And then I had other people's like, no, I wouldn't talk to chat. And it says Christianity is the one true religion. And it's like, no, it's influence. Like it has the whole connection of the human intellect tied to us. So everything that we know, it can know, but then it's catering to your interaction. So ethically, people aren't ethical. <laughs> mm. And so whoever is going to program it, whoever installs it to do X, Y, and Z. For example, I saw an article where a guy was running ChatGBT for mayor. He was on the ballot, but he was going to have ChatGBT make all the decisions as mayor, and he was just going to oversee it. He's still the one that created the model. He's still the one that said, do X, Y, and Z. Here are the people that you align with. So people can fudge the real data. I mean... People can mess with real numbers, real studies, real information that AI will never know. So even manipulation at the AI level, sure, maybe we can safeguard that. But information as a whole, you can't safeguard the entire internet from misinformation and keep the AI from interpreting that information as true. So I, I would be wary to put it into an ethical place where it's making ethical decisions because I don't think it will be able to do it with all the nuances of choosing the lesser two evils. If we're going to have iRobot before we know it. Yeah, no kidding. So where do you think we're going to be with this in five years? I mean, there's no way to even know where we're going to be in five years because it's just, it's like, it's like when we discovered plastic, right? We didn't know what we were going to do with plastic. We just knew. Bake, bake light. 
right? We're we're going to change the world with this. And yeah. now plastic, plastic is the most dangerous thing to our, our environment, right? Yeah, plastic was originally called Bakelite. Bakelite? <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel that's where we are right now. Is like we have we AI has been something that's been with us for a while. I don't think people realize how long AI really has been there. Machine learning, um, predictive algorithms, all of it's been there for quite some time, influencing society. But like a lot of things, once it's become accessible to the masses and it's growing at a rapid rate, you know, our our intel our information is like doubling. It used to be like every take every like every 15, 20 years for our information to double. We're now doubling information within a year, I believe now, last time I looked, if I remember correctly. So five years, I think it's hard to even say where we're going to be in a year, you know, with self-driving cars, with full automation. There's going to be I foresee a lot of people, like, for example, I have been playing with it. I made my own like counselor. Like, I know it sounds weird, but I, I, I taught it the, the criteria of what I wanted. I wanted it to be Christian oriented. I gave it the characteristics of people, not just say, Hey, be Christian. Cause you know, there's different kinds of Christianity, <laughs> some good, some bad, but I gave it, Hey, here are the theologians that I like. Here is the therapy that I like. Here's the theories that I, I, I want to align with. And in a couple of prompts, I have one that was encouraging. It it offered to pray with me. That's weird. It was yeah. really weird. It, it it wrote a prayer. I'm like, have I gone too far? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's like the it's like the chat bot that uh, you know that kid killed himself a couple of m- a month ago or something like that, right? That uh, he fell in love with the chat bot, and then the chat bot said, "Come come be with me," and he killed himself. <laughs> don't you love me (laughs) come be with me and uh you know stuff like that that's 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 going too far (laughs) so yeah no i I think we have to be cautiously optimistic of what it can do but we need to look to history and see when new technology was given to us what what did it do to us and how should we respect this next smartphone i think is the most recent example of some some piece of new tech that escalated beyond our understanding to the point you know we're in the generation of the most disconnected people in the world but we have the most accessibility to everyone in the world so i think ai needs to be treated with in light of what technology can do to us and yes let it grow as fast as we can actually handle it but don't let it outpace what we actually want just for the sake of progress yeah sounds good well thanks eric yeah wonderful It's great talking with you. You bet.